Hello, hello. Welcome to today's live English lesson here on the Speak English with Vanessa YouTube channel. I hope you're having a wonderful day and you're ready to open your mind to some new expressions, especially today, a phrasal verb. We're going to be talking about how to use cut out, cut out in daily life, in your conversations, and to help you pronounce it correctly. So if you're here live with me, welcome. If you are not here live and you would like to join me live, there are live English lessons every Tuesday and Thursday at 9 a.m. EST, that's the New York time zone, here on this channel. If you'd like to get a notification, the first way is to subscribe to my YouTube channel, and when you click the little bell symbol, you'll get a notification when the lessons are live. And the second way, if there is a time change, because usually 95% of the time they are at 9 a.m. EST, Tuesday, Thursday. I try to stick to the schedule, but in the next couple weeks, I'm going to be traveling. <laughs> so in the next couple weeks, throughout the end of March, beginning of April, a couple times are going to change. So if you want a notification in advance about the time change, you can sign up for my email group because on this email group, I will be giving you a notification in advance. And the best way to get my email notifications, plus free lessons, plus all of the material that I think is useful for becoming a fluent speaker, you can download my free ebook, Five Steps to Becoming a Confident English Speaker. The link is in the description or up here. And when you read this ebook, I hope that the book itself will be useful for you, but you'll also be able to receive my emails and get updates about these live lessons. I hope that they're useful to you and I would love for you to be able to participate live. We've got some friends here live with us today. Estella, hello. Reza in Germany. Gildane in Brazil. Junjong, hello. <laughs> Glad that you're here. Thailand, Vietnam, Cote d'Ivoire, wonderful, thank you. Thanks for joining me. I think that today's lesson will be useful. We use this phrasal verb all the time. <laughs> so I think that it will be a good step for you to expand your vocabulary. And if you already use this phrasal verb, you'll be able to know if you're using it correctly. <laughs> so let's talk about our first question today. Hmm, I want to ask you, Let's imagine, let's imagine that you have a friend. And well, hopefully you have a friend. We don't need to imagine you have a friend, but let's imagine you have a friend who is, uh, let's say 200 kilograms. So they need to lose some weight. 200 kilograms is not so healthy. You're worried about their life, their lifestyle, their health, their heart, your friend, is 200 kilograms. So I want to ask you, which foods do you think they should cut out of their lives? Cut out is our phrasal verb today. So I want to see if you can use this in a sentence about a really common topic, cutting out food from your diet. So let's imagine you're talking to your friend who is who is 200 kilograms, <laughs> and you say, oh, well, you said you wanted to lose weight, so I think you should cut out, hmm, oh, Iman says junk food should be cut out. Great idea, junk food, maybe some something too sweet, something too oily, something not so natural, <laughs> these kinds of junk foods. Oh, Ayu says she should cut out sweets, cut out fatty foods, cut out chocolate, not chocolate. <laughs> uh, they, they need to cut out carbs out of their diet. 
Uh, junk food should be cut out because 200 kilograms is too much. I agree. <laughs> you should cut pizza out. Oh, I got a couple people who said pizza. Cut. He must cut out meat, fat, and bread. Oh, that is pizza. <laughs> meat, fat, and bread. <laughs> Uh, Gabrielle has a good question. Cut it out is used to stop doing something, change the way you do things. Yes, yeah, so there are a couple ways to use cut out. Let's use it in this first way, the most physical, specific way, and then we'll talk about some other ways at the end of the lesson. So I want to write some of your wonderful sentences because you're using this in a beautiful sentence. So let's write down... You, this is for your friend, you're talking to your friend, you should cut out junk food. You should cut out junk food. So the word we're talking about today is cut out, cut out. And usually we use the word cut to talk about scissors, so you can imagine this kind of image. Scissors are cutting the paper. They're cutting something, and maybe they're cutting part out. We're gonna throw it away. We're gonna get rid of it. You should cut out bad habits. Oh, great one, Asio, I agree with that. You should cut out salad. Mm, maybe you want them to get bigger and bigger. <laughs> Oh, you should cut out eating at night. We've got lots of good health advice here. <laughs> so let's make this sentence in a little bit of a different way. You should cut. Let's see something that someone said here. I'll add it in here. Oh, sweet foods. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's say you should cut sweet Foods out. All right, do you notice a difference between these two sentences? Where is the second part? Out. Mm. So we have cut our phrasal verb. You should cut out, here it's together. And in the second sentence, it's not together. You should cut sweet foods out. Beautiful, no problem. We can cut, we can split this phrasal verb, and it's completely natural. We do this all the time. Let's try one more example with this. You should cut it out. So in this example, we have to know what is it? <laughs> what is it? If I only said to you, uh, hi, Dervis, you should cut it out. You would be really confused because you have no idea what, what is it? <laughs> so we have to use this only in a bigger context, only in a context where your friend knows the kind of things that you're talking about. Maybe your friend came to you and said, oh, Adriana, I am 200 kilograms. <laughs> so can you please help me to find a good way to lose weight? What should I eat? And you can say, oh, well, fat, sweet foods, uh, junk food, eating at night, you need to cut it out. Here we have a context. You've already listed some things. You could say you should cut them out, no problem. But when you have that context, you're already talking about a topic like bad food, but it tastes so good, doesn't it? <laughs> when you're talking about this topic already, you can use it because we already know what is it. <laughs> Uh, Jun Jung has a good question. He says, Vanessa, I've got a question. What's the difference between cut out and cut off? Cut off. So in this situation, cut out means it is all right here with, how about blue? Let's choose a different one. 
This means to eliminate. Eliminate. You're getting rid of these things from your diet. Eliminating. But cut off, cut off can mean you're stopping an activity. So we could say, um, my, my daughter isn't doing well in school, so I decided to cut off her cell phone service because she wanted to use it too much and it was a distraction. I decided to cut off this service. So you're stopping, this is kind of a physical thing, you're stopping that service. So we have two different cut phrasal verbs and I think by focusing on one, and it's great to ask questions, please ask questions if you have them about other phrasal verbs. When we focus on one, you can see the different nuances of when we can use this. Osama has a great definition here, cancel. Cut off could mean cancel. Yes, because I forgot to pay my internet bill, the internet company cut off my internet service. They canceled my internet service. Great question about cut off and cut out. <laughs> so I have a question for you. What do you think are some other ways we can use cut out? Cut out. We already talked about probably the most common, cutting out something from your diet. Your diet. A diet can be just the things that you eat in your life. It doesn't need to be a special type of food, but cutting out things that you eat. What's another way we can use cut out? Another situation. Welcome to everyone who is just joining me. I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Oh, Long says, I should not cut out healthy food. I agree. Oh, Shirky has a great other way to use cut out. Hmm. He says, hi, Vanessa. You sure you're really cut out to be a teacher? Oh, this is a great second way to use cut out. And this is actually going to be typically a longer phrase. Let me write this here. I'm not cut out to be a, let's just say, an engineer. Yeah, maybe, maybe if I worked really, really hard, I could succeed as an engineer, but it's not my passion. It's not my interest. So we could say cut out to be, cut out to be. So typically this is gonna stick together. He's cut out to be a famous musician. musician. <laughs> I'm cut out to be a teacher, I hope. It's enjoyable to me and I hope it's uh, good for you. <laughs> so I'm curious for you, what are you cut out to be? This means you're good at it. You feel like we can imagine the same idea with scissors. We can imagine some kind of, uh, like God is cutting out <laughs> you, like a paper version of you in some other realm. There's some uh, fate. <laughs> fate is cutting out your life and your shape is perfect for being an engineer. Your your shape that you were cut out to be is great for a specific type of lifestyle. I wasn't cut out to be, um, let's say, uh, a farmer. That's a really difficult lifestyle. If you are a farmer, thank you so much. We need your food. It's necessary. But it's a pretty hard lifestyle. So you could say, I'm cut out to be a teacher. I'm not cut out to be a farmer, an engineer. <laughs> Hung says, I'm cut out to be an Olympic fencer. Oh, I hope to see you in the Olympics. Great. 
Oh, Gildani, this is beautiful. I'm cut out to encourage people. Beautiful. Yes, encouraging people is a good goal in life. <laughs> Jason said, I'm not cut out to be an active guy. Mm, beautiful. Uh, our friends from Indonesia have a question. Is a phrasal verb a verb? Yes, yes. A phrasal verb is a verb. It has two parts. One, two. The verb and the second part looks like a preposition, but it goes with this verb. So this verb is all together. So we can say this is our full verb here. I'm cut out to be a polyglot. Oh, Claudio, beautiful. Let's change Jean-Jacques' sentence around and say, I'm cut out to be a fluent English speaker. You got it. <laughs> oh, we've got musician here. Takahiro says, I'm not cut out to be a musician. I think you guys have got this second meaning beautifully. The first one is, you should eliminate, you should cut out junk food. And the second one is talking about your personal lifestyle. I'm not cut out to be a professional musician, like Takahiro said. <laughs> let's talk about a third way. Before we go, let's imagine a third way to use cut out and this way is pretty clear and straightforward so we don't need to focus on it for too long i'm curious what do you think it means if i said what if i said to you cut it out <laughs> only this cut it out and i had kind of an angry look on my face what do you think this means? If I said to, uh, to Victor or to Osama, <laughs> or if I said this to Gabrielle, cut it out. What do you think that means? Cut it out. Cut it out. <laughs> yes, Victor, you've got it. It means stop. End. Stop it right now. Oh, Ashik, you're correct. Right now. It's really emphasized, especially you can see by the way I wrote it, cut it out, cut it out. So typically, we can use this in situations where someone is doing something. Let's imagine that you have two kids and your kids are playing together, but all of a sudden, the older kid starts hitting the younger kid and you walk into the room and you say, Hey, cut it out. He's smaller than you. Don't hurt him. <laughs> so you are trying to tell them, stop. Stop it. Oh, we've got a little friend here. <laughs> so we could say, cut it out in anger, in anger. And this is used, there's a lot of expressions we can use when we're angry to say, stop it. You can say simply, stop it. Stop hitting your younger sister. Stop hitting your younger brother. <laughs> but you can also use cut out. Cut it out. And it's, it's strong, but I think if someone is doing something terrible, like absolutely awful, and you want to be as strong as possible, I recommend not saying cut it out. Cut it out is for daily events like your older brother is hitting your younger brother probably happens often it's not the end of the world <laughs> so you you can use cut it out but if there's something really bad happening maybe on the street you see someone beating up someone else if you feel brave enough <laughs> you wouldn't say cut it out maybe the person who's beating up the other person would feel like oh they don't really care it's not too big of a deal they're saying cut it out <laughs> so we use this kind of annoyance or for daily things if you saw something really bad i recommend just saying stop it stop what are you doing stop <laughs> that's really clear everyone understands stop <laughs> something in our brains turns on and we say ah I should stop. <laughs> uh, 
Thank you, everyone, for your kind comments about my cat. They're always curious. Yeah. <laughs> um, she is cut out to be really cute, I think. <laughs> She's cut out to play all day, nonstop. Play with our other cats, play with the air, play with anything she finds. She can play with a sock. <laughs> she can play with really a piece of dust and she'll chase and she she really likes. She's cut out to play with anything. She's cut out to be easily amused because a couple months ago, we were moving some furniture and we accidentally hit the wall. And our walls are white, but underneath the white wall, the white paint is some red paint. So we accidentally hit the wall and there's a little red spot. And we haven't fixed it <laughs> because she loves to play with this red spot on the wall. She'll hide, she'll jump at it. She's cut out to be easily entertained. I hope we can use this phrasal verb in a lot of situations. <laughs> so thank you everyone for joining me. I hope you can use cut out in a lot of different ways. Let's practice using these phrasal verbs. Let's practice using this second version here, cut out to be. Mm. Let's use this in a positive way about English. I want to create a final sentence and we can say it together. Are you ready? Let's say, I am or I'm, I'm cut out to be a confident English speaker. When you say it again and again, it'll become true because you start to think that again and again. Let's say this all together. I'm cut out to be a confident English speaker. Doesn't matter if you feel nervous now, you feel worried now, you are cut out to be a confident English speaker. And sometimes when someone, like when you're a child and your parent tells you, oh, I believe you can do this, you feel good. You feel like, oh, maybe I can do this. So when you tell yourself that again and again, it grows. So let's say this together. Let's practice pronouncing it correctly. I'm cut out, cut out to be a confident English speaker. It's possible. I want to show you here really quick. Because in American English, we love to turn T into a D sound. So it's possible this T could become a D if you're speaking quickly. Cud out. Cud out. Hmm. If you want to say it like this, you can. But if you hear Americans talking, you're going to hear that pronunciation, especially if they're speaking quickly. So if you want to say, I'm cut out to be a confident English speaker. I'm cut out, cut out. There's no air. Cut out. <laughs> Just cut out, cut out. It kind of sounds like cud, which is something that a cow eats. Cud. <laughs> I'm cut out to be a confident English speaker. Thank you everyone who's writing this down. This is also good dictation practice because when you hear me speak, you're writing down exactly what I'm saying. So we have Jesus here who says, I'm cut out to be a confident English speaker. In Indonesia, they say, I'm cut out to be a confident English speaker. Gabriela says, I'm cut out to be a confident English speaker. Beautiful. You're listening to my words and you're writing the same thing. Beautiful. Keep up the good work. Remind yourself when you wake up, stretch in the morning and say, okay, I am cut out to be a confident English speaker. I can do this. Keep up the good work. And I hope you can join me again for another live lesson next week. And if you would like to continue to learn with me, you think, Vanessa, don't cut off your lesson too short. Come 
and continue teaching, continue talking about this, well, good news. <laughs> there are plenty of other live lessons and shorter lessons, five minutes, four, five, six minutes, on my YouTube channel. So feel free to enjoy those videos. Write down what you've learned, repeat out loud, make sure that you're saying each sentence so that you can remember it, and you can improve your pronunciation and become confident. That's the goal. <laughs> so I recommend enjoying the other free video lessons, and you can also get on my email group, this group where you'll get notifications about any live lesson time changes, about free materials that I wanna share with you, about courses, about tips and expressions. This is a good way to be in personal contact with me. You can download my free ebook down here, Five Steps to Becoming a Confident English Speaker, or at the end of this lesson. That's the best way to receive my emails, and I hope that it will be really useful for you. Print it out, put it on the wall, put it under your pillow, <laughs> read it to your cats, whatever you want to do, read it and use it and use that material. So thanks so much, everyone, for joining me. Please join me again on Tuesday, 9 a.m. EST and Thursday, 9 a.m. EST. See you later, everyone. Have a beautiful day. <laughs> Bye.